I made a video recently talking about leaf bags and how much I love them, and a lot of folks seem to love them too. Lots of comments of folks saying the number of bags that they collected this year. It's a point of pride for a lot of folks, and myself included. I think it's really fun to do. Anyway, uh, we talked in that video a lot about storing the bags for winter use in our chicken run. It's gotten a lot rainier, and there's happened to be this huge windfall of additional leaf bags we're going to do a very different thing with. We noticed so the leaf bag season's definitely over as far as the town picking up, but there's this one place near us that each year seems to put them out very late. They don't put any tags. I think they might know that we're the ones that take them now, and I'm happy with that. But there were well over 80 bags um, sitting in front of just one location, which is just too tempting to not go ahead and get. And so Juan and I did that um, over two loads with the car. I took a third load on my way home the other day. And instead of trying to dump the leaves out to store them for the winter and use the leaf bags for shipping, which is what we normally do, we're going to use the bags themselves as a sheet mulch with leaves on top. So if you don't need the bags for other things, the paper, it's a great way to suppress weeds and then the leaves on top pin that down and unify the look of it and feed the soil over time. So here's a little garden area next to our main gate between our space and our lovely neighbor space. And there are some things that are planted in here, but there's also a whole lot of weediness. So for example, there are peach cap, uh, black cap raspberry, there's an American persimmon, there's a gumi, there are a couple other things here there. I think there's an oak tree right there to grow. And then a lot of creeping charlie, a lot of perennial weeds, a lot of um, strawberries that are inedible. So this is a great opportunity to suppress this herbaceous layer very thoroughly for the fall and winter, unify the look of it, smooth it out, feed the soil, and hold the option of transitioning this in the spring in a different direction. And these leaf bags They've got all the raw ingredients needed to do this beautifully. So the bag itself is either two or three ply a lot of times. So laid out it's four or six ply, which is enough to knock back weeds pretty thoroughly, especially if there's mulch on top. There's one bag that I need to start with to empty out before I can get to the other stuff. So like put a bag down and dump on top. I'm gonna to use it to mulch around some of the plantings we have. Very fine detailed mulching going on there. I figure the wind and time will spread that out. I might kick it around a little bit. But now I've got my first bag to lay out my sheet mulching. And so I can lay this right down on the bed where I want to erase a two foot by three foot section of weeds. And then I can dump the next bag of leaves on top of that. Probably I need to empty this out a little bit more, get the bag down, kind of find a balance. But empty bag straight on the ground, tons of leaves on top, it's a pretty winning combo. This is all creeping Charlie and strawberry, so that's a great spot to lay the bag down. By no means is this a bed where there'll be zero weeds in the spring, but now it's very clear that there's a seedling apple, there's a little oak tree, there's a gumi that's doing its thing, there's the peach cap that are meaning to grow, there's a persimmon in the back, there's stuff on the other side of the fence, and everywhere that's leaves is a pretty thoroughly suppressed perennial weedy patch that in the spring we can pull the leaves aside where it's not that weedy, we can put down compost and directly sow seed, or we can dig in and put in more perennials or large plugs of things like tomatoes. But either way, even if it doesn't get rid of the weeds, this feeds the soil immensely. But now the bags are gone, the leaves are down, and it looks a lot better. And that was zero dollars in about three minutes. That has honey berries on the north and a little bit of perennial kale here or there, but for the most part, it's just weedy. So I'm gonna spread the leaves by hand around the honeyberry. And 
then in this case, I'm going to use the bag to go directly over the weediest stuff, which is this grass and this dock. It's not going to get both, so I'll just take the grass. And I'll put another bag over this dock, and that'll be way more suppressive of that more intensive weediness. Very simple workflow to gesture in the direction of deeper soil, more organic matter, more mulch, more uh, microbe and macrophage consumer feeding through the winter. This walkway I'm gonna renovate by either taking flaked hay from this round bale that's left over. That may either go into the high tunnel to feed a hot compost system or be for walkways. I think I might actually use this beautiful pile of chips that just came in as our walkway re-up. But I might go through and dig the walkways out and put that on the beds first but none of that needs to be figured out right now. It looks a little bit more deliberate and thoughtful and certainly leaves the soil in a really lovely way for no matter how cold the winter is, it almost certainly won't freeze under here now. So soil life can be consuming things. This bed has a little bit of a perennial onion, which needs to expand, and then some cultivar black currant, a yasta berry, and a bunch of sochan to the northern end, and the interior of this would be lovely to be a sprawling uh, annual garden. I imagine nasturtiums and zucchini and things like that next summer. We can determine that later. Very fast and completely free. They're a little hard to see, but the other day, Jillian, our neighbor, and I uh, planted out some really nice pink champagne currants. These are pitched to the north so that they send up beautiful shoots to the south and fill out. So we've got a pink currant variety right here with a gumi as a species break, and then Glory de Sablon French uh, cultivar pink currants with a gumi, and then some white currants. I'd like to mulch these out. I think what I'll do is save the paper to mulch the walkway, which is pretty weedy on the west side of this bed, and use the leaves to really support these transplanted bare root plants. These were planted with some care and good hydration when they went in and good soil compaction and now this mulch makes me feel pretty confident that they'll be able to root over winter and grow. They already had roots on them, they were nice sized plants. We should be able to see good growth next year. A little rough looking if the, this isn't your aesthetic, but to my mind and my eye, this is a bed that's been put to sleep in a really thoughtful way and uh, facilitates the plants actually being awake. Put to bed for the winter, but with one eye open on those plants so they can keep building root systems and getting really locked in. If next year is a droughty year, I want to know that they built their roots all winter and that the soil is super healthy and protected come spring. The rest of these bags should go very, very quickly. I'm going to just dress out this area with bags on the weediest spots and leaves on top and then go right down this whole line, putting on leaves to hold the option of some nice planting on this beautiful lush berm 
So there's the mowed area and snow plow access. It's about two feet off the driveway and then a bed begins and that's what I'm going to focus the rest of this on. make it all the way to the farthest end of this fence line but that's okay so this is uh, 60 bags of leaves and about a 40 minute project to bring them here and however long I'll put it up on the screen uh, to spread them out the bags are doing the work of being a lighter weight somewhat malleable sheet mulch and then the leaves to be a feeding thing and to keep that pinned down they unify the beds they feed 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 so much earthworm activity can happen here all winter. Zero dollars, it's a waste stream. It's pretty lovely. As time allows, later on we'll take this wood chip pile and uh, dump it pretty thoroughly in the walkways, but I might want to dig those out first to feed some of these future beds. But we'll come back around to that, there's no rush. I just didn't want to leave bags sitting on our neighbor's driveway for more than a day or so. A little bit tidier, definitely a whole lot healthier for the plant communities that want to grow here. And to my eye, it's an improvement for sure. Let me know what you think. Is this a weird thing, a good thing? Do you do this sort of thing? Let's chat about it. Take care.